Okay. There we are. Yes. Yes. I think there was a little bit of a delay, but that's okay. Um, we made it. We've made it to the end. I know. I know. Crazy, right? That we've made it all the way to the end. And yet again, another season of indoor and arena football has come to a close. I know, unfortunately, the game we got was not indicative of, you know, what this, you know, league has been, the IFL National Championship. You know, it was not a great game. Uh, 16 points scored by the Massachusetts Pirates. They were shut out in the first half. Arizona with 53. We ended with exactly 69 points, so nice. Um, but, yeah, total domination from the opening kick, which started with a rouge, all the way to the very end, in which Massachusetts can only muster up 16 points, all coming in the second half, by the way. You know, Arizona was up 29 to nothing at halftime. You know, it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. But the Rattlers, you know, have won their seventh title. Kevin Guy, you know, you know, who knows what he will be doing next. Some people are already saying, oh, well, he might retire or something like that. But and Devontae Merriweather should be the MVP for this game. I, I know people are still mad about Jerome Johnson getting the MVP honors for the IFL. But honestly, I don't really care about awards and all that. So, you know, not much to talk about with awards. Like, come on. But yeah, three interceptions by Devontae Merriweather in this game that were really key. Dalton Snee, of course, you know, played, you know, excellent. No Thomas Owens for the Pirates. So that was kind of a damper. But then again, the Pirates, you know, been pretty inconsistent all year, and the fact that they got, you know, these two victories over the two top teams in the East really says a lot about the East. Again, the West was more of a gauntlet in all seriousness, but at the end of the day, we have what we have in our national championship. I hate saying that word. I really hate saying that word. This is not college football. This is the United Bowl, damn it. But yeah, 53 16, that's it. The season is done. And now we can focus on 2025 and we can focus on what in the world's going to happen, you know, in 2025 for a lot of these leagues and a lot of these teams and stuff like that. Um, there's a couple other things that I need to, you know, say really quickly. Of course, um, a lot of people, myself included, implied this team. You know, would be the 10th NAL team in the Shreveport Rougarou who have Pat Pimmel as the head coach. Keith Carter, he will be the uh, main owner. And I heard Keith Russ and Douglas, they, they're also in this thing. But the Rougarou are the 10th team in the NAL. Caleb Scott got let go from Ozarks after just one season. So that's, that's the thing that happened. But Shreveport, you are in the NAL. And hopefully – you know, things go well for this team because, man, who who is who is ready for the NAL to, you know, rock and roll? You know, and there, again, there could be more, but we will have to wait. You all will see other content creators and stuff like that talk about this, you know, you know, week uh, going on from next week onward. Uh, but I, I will take a break from the indoor arena game as usual as you all know until uh, about thanksgiving time so you know thanksgiving time and then a little bit after the super bowl and then we come back in march again and this will be you know that will be year number five of this week in indoor football you know so um this season and i commented and i said on twitter this is you know an unexpected season. This was a season that was completely unexpected in the ways that it continued to confound us each and every week. This wasn't like 2022 or 2023 or 2020 or 2021 or 2019 or 2018 or whatever. You know, it wasn't like these past few years. You know, 
it was a different year with the AFL 3.0 coming back and being an absolute disaster from the jump, and yet they still managed to somehow make it through. The NAL, you know, yet again did not get the proper teams in here. Again, the North Texas Bulls, Topeka Tropics, Oklahoma Flying Aces. Yeah, it, it was rough for a good chunk of the season, but they endured yet again. They endured yet again and made it to, you know, one of the probably one of the best championship games I think I've seen in quite some time. The AIF, you know, said, hey, we're just trying to make it through this year. You know, we also had our own problems, you know, but we're trying to make it through this year too. So, and the AIFs immediately, you know, went on over and joined. Most of the teams have joined the NAL at this point. Um, of course, you know, there were some casualties like the AWFC dying, you know, you know, but it is okay. Um, West Michigan getting knocked off in a league they made, getting knocked off for a title in a league they made against a team that is probably going to be playing fall football at this point. Yes, I said fall football because it's that there is supposed to be a Michigan Avengers up one athletic showcase game, you know, over the next, I think it's next Saturday or Sunday, something like that. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, we all thought that West Michigan was going to dominate the GLAF yet again. And then they lose in a game that, you know, they really shouldn't have lost it. And it was the funniest thing. And I will continue to say that that is one of the funniest things of this season. You make a league with a bunch of teams that do not have arenas. They are playing soccer plexes and warehouses and barns and stuff like that. You know, not professional football at all. Not not even close to semi-pro. Just bleh, disgusting football. And you make a league and you decide, hey, we're going to lay an egg in our championship game. The AL2, while, you know, continuing to be, you know, not great, at least they completed out of the season. But the only team that was professional beat the brakes off of everybody, at least in the division anyway, beat the brakes off of everybody, won the championship real easily, and probably would have beaten the brakes off of everybody else in the other side of the league which was dwindling day by day due to absolute nonsense, as usual. I mean, the league, I mean, the AL2, you know, is going to be looking like, you know, the, the bottom tier league yet again. But at least it's it exists, you know. I don't want it to exist, but it's going to continue to persist as long as, as, long as teams buy into it, you know, as long as, you know, you know. As long, as long as teams that are very low level continue to buy into it. And then the IFL, a magical season. Yes, there were some issues like all these leagues. Streaming issues, teams, you know, just, you know, I mean, streaming was the big one. But, I mean, you know, some teams, you know, not having, you know, up-to-date rosters. Some teams, you know, not having up-to-date websites. Some teams, you know, having to get guys off the street. You know, you know the, the unexpected passing of a great coach and everything like that, you know. But the IFL made it. The IFL's, you know, time with the Vegas deal for the championship game at least is now over. And it was disgusting to see, you know, probably less than the night over under is 2,500 came to this game between Massachusetts and Arizona, by the way. I'm leaning with the under, of course. Um, and, yeah, so hopefully these, hopefully the, hopefully the United Bowls, the United Bowls, the United Bowl, I will continue to say it's the United Bowls. It's the United Bowl Todd. You can't convince us otherwise. It's the United Bowl to us. Hopefully this game goes back to, you know, home sites 
you know, we're, you know, the, the team that has the best record hosts the, the championship game. Like, come on, come on, please. I'm begging. I'm begging you here. But if not, and we do like another neutral site, you know, yet again, which I'm not, not, not too, con- I'm not too keen on. Then yeah, I guess. You know the you know the NAL and the IFL have you know both indoor rules now. Basically, the Nets are basically an AFL only thing at this point. But we're back up to three leagues, really. You know. We're back up to three, you know, sort of major leagues again with the AFL with who knows what's going to happen. Will the league die? Will the league continue? We don't know. You know, yeah, they've added all this front office staff, but we don't know because, again, the championship for the AFL 3.0 was played in a mall. The NAL... They're at 10 right now. They're at 10 teams right now. But the big question is, can they sustain these 10 teams? There's a lot of interesting guys. There's some guys that you know I, I vibe with very heavy. You know, and there's some guys I know in the NAL. My 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 big question for the offseason for the NAL is, you know, it's been you know about two months. You have at least 10 with at least maybe two more, maybe four more, maybe even more than that with a 10-game schedule confirmed too, which I don't like, but I'm going to have to live with it. How do you sustain these 10 teams that you have right now? How do you keep the cost down? How do you make this thing work? That's the biggest question. That's the question that we're going to have to stick with. How do you how do you keep these ten teams and how do you keep them all happy? You know, the ego stuff, the ego trips are finally you know kind of boiling over a little bit, but at the same time, trouble could be brewing. You know, if things do not, you know, look the greatest, and we're back down to like eight teams or something again. I want all ten teams to stay, you know, in the NAL. The IFL, honestly, the biggest question, you know, is, you know, obviously CBS is still in this thing for like one more year. So will there be games, you know, actually on CBS Sports Network at some point, like actual regular season games? You know, because this year we had stadium for the playoffs and we all know how that went. Not well. That went terribly. Expansion is the other big thing. Fisher's Freight, they're coming in. But the other day, somebody said something about, you know, hey, what about some of these other teams that, you know, we could get, you know, from like the AFL or that Stockton team that has popped up or or anything else? Well, Fisher said, we're, we're talking about Dakota, man. And if the Dakota Bucks do not return – just ask the project up there. It, it's it's been way past due to ask the project anyway. It, Dakota trying to bring them back. It's you know at this point if you're not gonna bring them back, just don't, just don't because we got over the workman's comp, you know. But it still took a lot of effort. It's still taking a lot of effort to bring this team back, and the funds have not been showing for it. You know, something something isn't there. If it's the funds, if it's the people, something, something's not showing up. And there needs to be an 18th team. You don't want to have uneven team. You don't want to have uneven, you know, divisions and everything like that. You don't want to have uneven divisions now. So somebody might have to get lured over in that case. Because time is a ticking now. It's August. And, um, well... Time is a ticking, so if you don't have an 18th team for next year, you know the plan is to get the 24, right? You don't have an 18th team for next year because you got to have by two at this point. Well, something's got to give. So we will see. We will see. Um, again, to 
everybody that you know I've interviewed this year, you know, whether it be you know Trey Sherrill, who was with Duluth, and of course Duluth won a championship, whether it be Mac Davis with Wheeling, of course Wheeling also won a championship this year. Um, you know, I know my boy Red, you know, didn't have the greatest, you know, we, him in Wichita didn't have the greatest season, but I'm glad I got to talk to him. I'm glad I got to talk to an old buddy of mine. And I mean, I'm really extremely grateful. Um, Justin Cobo, an awesome guy, you know, definitely, you know, he, he, again, he's one of those personalities in the NAL. That's just, you know, yes. Yes, this is the type of guy you need. It, I mean, my goodness. Um, um, uh, to Josh Franklin of the AL2, of the Hot Shots, I know you're looking for some place to play. I know you're looking for somewhere to play for next year. Um, you may want to check out, you know, that, that Dallas um, Falcons New League. You may want to check that out if you want to do that. And to Arena Football Nation, and we'll talk about the content creators, you know, next here. Uh, again, if you ain't watched Arena Football Nation, you should. You should. He Again, he's ballooned up to over 600 subscribers, like, very quickly, way faster than I think I, you know, would have, you know, anticipated. Um, and, and he's great, you know. I'm glad I got to talk to him. I'm glad I got the interview him because again he was my last resort. I didn't, I, you know, you, I did not expect to interview him. It, I, I did want to, but I thought it was going to be like later down the line, maybe like 2025 or something like that. But I wanted to, you know, you know, do it because the the you know, Ozarks wasn't saying nothing. Kansas City, you know, their social media team just kind of didn't even answer me. And I already interviewed for somebody from Duluth, so I, I didn't want to interview another guy from Duluth. You know, again, I will do that, you know, next year. I will do that in 2025. But, yeah, to the usual suspects, again, Arena Football Nation, one of the guys who's got a, you know, gotten in, you know, broke out into the scene this year as far as, you know, creating content that is very engaging. Shout out to him. To the boys over at the Blizzard Fancast, I know they, 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 they the boys can be outspoken. You know, BJ and Taylor, I know them boys can be a little bit outspoken, you know, sometimes. But hey, they made it. They, they, they got, they got, they got, they got something good going on over there. Of course, it's a part of the arena football, you know, you know, conundrum that is inside the walls. You know, I shouldn't have said conundrum, but I'm. Y'all know what I meant to say. Hey, hey, collective, a collective of guys in the alley, Cody. You know, even though I, I genuinely, you know, you know, he breaks down every single IFL game way better than I could. He breaks them down way better than I could. And, you know, because I'm short, simple to the point, I'm pretty blunt. So, he will give you in-depth breakdowns. He's giving. He's he's also a guy that you know has broken onto the scene this year. Even got a co-podcasting um, spot with the course of Sam Shady, who I know, you know I know I know I know some people you know are kind of like oh oh you know Sam Shady is you know he's got you know Shady's on time, <laughs> but he's not he's not he's not you know I know people like to make that joke you know but you know. Fantastic guy, you know. I've been, you know, trying to keep up with the the, um, the around the indoor world show that he's been doing each and every Saturday morning at seven o'clock a.m. Central. And I got to tell you, I can't keep up every Saturday. I haven't, I haven't been keeping up every Saturday, but I have been watching afterwards. I will watch afterwards, and you know, the, some of the stuff that he was able to break this year really helped kind of cement my thoughts on some things like Cedar Rapids because I already thought that was a complete absolute disaster and Cedar Rapids was a disaster, right? It was a disaster. It was a disaster, man. Um, off the wall, he's new to this scene. He's newer to the scene too, so um, give him some love. Like I said a couple weeks ago, give him some love. He's got some great interviews up. He's got some great analysis. 
And, you know, he talks about the games on Twitter way more than I do because I would not. I usually don't talk about IFL games on Twitter. I do not do that. Um, of course, the boys, you know, Jim Mernier, who runs the Inside the Walls podcast, the Inside the Walls network. And, I mean, he, he does a fantabulous job, as he always does. Each and every time, you know, you know, I get time to sit down and watch, you know, one of, you know, one of the things that he's working on, whether it be, you know, the podcast with um, Coach Rez or, you know, him and his buddy Bob or, you know, any of the player interviews he does with the Jacksonville guys. And I mean, it, 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 one of the hardest working people in the industry, you know, aside from myself, of course. And of course, another guy. Dukon, the GOAT Arena Football Statement. I know. I know. Um, the NAL is going to premiere something, you know, f- that he has personally filmed. And, you know, it, it, it's great. It's a 45-minute thing. It'll be next Saturday. Of course, I'm not going to be on here next Saturday talking about, you know, indoor football. We're going to be talking college football next Saturday. Um, yeah. Check that out next Saturday. I'm probably be watching it at some point. You know, by Sunday. I'm. I'm uh, look. My look. My time is limited at this point. My time is limited. I'm a hardworking person at this point. And the last person I want to shout out is this week in Arena Ball, who has made you know some of the funniest shit posts I think I've seen this year. And you know, although he is an Albany fan, an Albany super fan, you know, you know, we all know super fans. You know. You know, can get a little bit too hyped about the team, but he was pretty. He's pretty genuine. He's he's great. I think we talked like maybe once on camera. I think it was like a big day where pretty much everybody was on camera for um, around the indoor world. Um, yeah, it it was great. It, it was great seeing you know some of the stuff that he's put out this year. Again, check out that 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 shit posting compilation because it's it's premium. Mm. Chef's kiss type stuff right there. And it me, of course. I know. I, I have to I have to get I have to I have to talk about myself last, you know, this year. I have to talk about myself last because honestly, this season was an evolution of this content. This is this this was not this is not something that wasn't planned. This has been in the works for about two years now to get back into interviewing people because I've interviewed people in the past on my public access show, The Objective Slam, which I'm bringing the podcast back for, you know, next week. And I also consider myself one of the hardest working, you know, people in this industry that does not get paid, that is not, you know, the most insider you know, person, because I don't have the time to be the insider. I don't have time to do all that. If I did, then I then that'd be great. You know, again, some things I just happen to get first before everybody else. Some things I just happen to get first. The evolution of this channel is almost complete. The evolution of this channel is almost complete. Again, interviews are just one facet. Um, I mean, owners, interview players. It'll be coaches, it'll be fans, content creators, you name it. And that was just six interviews this year. That was just six. I had planned for more than six. I had planned for at least like nine or ten. But I ultimately settled on six because I like even numbers, you know, for stuff. And we uh, we started the year at like 200 and... I don't know, like 230 subscribers or something like that. And we've gotten up to close to 300, and I would like to get over 300 by the end of the year. You know, that's like the main goal for me this year, and I'm glad you all stuck with me. Oh, and also Citizen Arcane, too. I don't want to forget him. You know, he also makes only indoor football content. I don't want to forget him. He does make some content, you know, basically about his personal experiences. Um, you know, go Again, I don't know how he, you know, his subscriber count has bloomed up. You know, his you know, every time I check out a video of his, there's always like 
by the six Mrs. Carpenter. I'm like, where are they? Where are they? Where are they over here? Where can they come over here to me real quick? You know. But yeah, and also Zach Common as well. I know he doesn't really, you know, do too much in the scene of arena indoor football anymore. He doesn't do too much, but he does, you know, when he can. You know that great. Um, Arena Football wrote the glory series that he did, you know, on Twitch. It, 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 was, it was fun when I could watch it. And they made some videos, you know, when he wasn't talking about, you know, like the UFL or anything like that. You know, it, it, it's that. But yeah, back to me real quick. Back to me before we end this off. Um, again, I want to thank everybody that has joined me on this journey this year. We've made it 24 weeks straight of talking about this great and glorious fight the 50 yard fight the indoor war whatever you want to call it and i can't wait for next season i can't wait for what's to come because i'm going to sit on the sidelines and just sit there and watch the madness continue i'm gonna sit there and watch the craziness the beautifulness the awesomeness continue about this great game as we head now from August to all the way up to tentatively March 9th, March 10th, around that time, which is which should be, you know, the kickoff of the IFL season next year at least. And again, to everybody, I'm thankful to be where I am, and I'm thankful that I'm still kicking to talk, you know, this great game each and every week. Uh, for the past four seasons, really, than the past six, you know, I was one of the guys who's, you know, that's been back, you know, that has gotten back into this great game, you know, six years ago. And I started talking about it six years ago. Again, the AFL died a second time. And then, you know, it evolved into a weekly series. And it evolved yet again with more interviews. And it evolved. And it will evolve yet again in 2025. So don't you, don't you, don't you go anywhere. You, you stay here. You hit that subscribe button. You hit that like button. You hit that share button. You hit whatever you need to hit. You comment. You do whatever you need to do. You stay right here because we got a lot to talk about over the, over the next, you know, six, seven months until we get back to talking indoor arena football. You stay right here. Join the party, comment, again, like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell if you need to be notified or whatever. And I'm Big Boy Sports, and I'm signing out, and I will see you all tomorrow to talk to WNBA. Congratulations once again to the Arizona Rattlers for winning their seventh title. Good night, and see you soon, everybody. Thank you.